Hi, welcome to Sydney Life Church Online. We are so glad that you joined us this morning. We pray that you are blessed as you watch this sermon. Welcome to Sydney Life Church this morning. Glad you could join us from wherever you're watching from. God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of things going on in the world, but a lot of things going on in the kingdom, which is great. So. It's good, you know, because the kingdom is moving, advancing. Things are happening. Amen? I mean, if we knew what God was doing, it would blow your mind. But he's doing stuff. Amen? We always kind of think God's behind the enemy, but he's not. He's way in front of the enemy, so it's good. So I've titled this sermon here, Take This Most Seriously. That's not me, by the way. Maybe that was me uh, 20 years ago, kind of. But <clears throat> take this most seriously. That's good, actually, because the guy looks pretty serious, doesn't he? So, yeah, I've, I've, I've titled that um, from just from a, from a scripture line in the message translation this morning. But uh, we're talking, we're continuing just on the healing, the healing thing. And, you know, I just thank God for the, the healings that we're getting in the church. And for some of them, like last week was tremendous, just instant healings, um, even before I, we got to the line of, for healing. So, so God, you know, God, we need to know this, that God is anxious to heal you. Can I put it like that? I know that sounds crude. God is not anxious about anything, but you know what I mean. God wants to heal you. God wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you. It's your bread. It's your, it's, it's your inheritance, right? So would you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18? Matthew chapter 18. And um, we're going to have a look at verse 18 and verse 19. Matthew 18, verses 18 and 19. I'm going to read to you. Um, from the King James Version first. But I'd like you to turn there and have a look at this because there is something so profound in this, in these two verses that we have to grasp. It's so important to grasp this. You probably know the scripture. Some of you may know the scripture by heart. But <clears throat> let's look at it again like we don't know it. It says there, assuredly, assuredly, that's a very strong word from God. You know, when God says assuredly, it means just pause for a moment and get what I'm about to say, because what I'm about to say is important. He says, assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then <clears throat> he says again, now sometimes we separate those two verses, and we just use <clears throat> verse 19, but it says again, so he's basically repeating what he's just said. He's just putting it in different words, right? He says, again, I say to you that if two, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, that is huge. If two of you on earth, now watch this, on earth <clears throat> concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. It's huge scripture, isn't it? So these expressions, bind and loose, you notice those expressions, whatever you bind, whatever you loose, these were common Jewish legal terms. 
They knew exactly, when they heard those words spoken, they knew exactly what those words meant. They were legal terms. Bind means to declare forbidden. In other words, don't forbid this to happen. And to loose is the very opposite, to release from bondage. Now, in the, in the message translation, this is where I get the title sermon from this morning. It, it puts it like this, which is, I really love it. It says, take this most seriously. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. Isn't that good? A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. And a no on earth is a no in heaven. What I say to one, what you say to one another is eternal. Amen. Interesting scripture. What you say, because you'll be judged by your word, right? So what you say is eternal because at some stage it's going to be judged. Amen. He says, I mean this. He says, I mean this. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven, and a no on earth is a no in heaven. What I say to you is eternal. I mean this. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. It's profound scripture, right? If only we could just grasp this. The Amplified, I'm reading you a few verses just so we get the impact of this verse. The Amplified says, whatever you bind, and then in brackets it says, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, will have already been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose, in brackets, permit, declare lawful on earth, will have already been loosed in heaven. So you notice that these are legal terms. He's using legal terms because the Bible is a legal document. This is a legal document. Amen. In other words, it it is written by an eternal judge. Think about that for a minute. The judge of all judges wrote this book. So what he's put into is a lot of words which are legal binding. They are legal words. To us in the English, it doesn't always mean that much, but it would have meant a lot to them in the Greek because they would have known right away, oh, wow, this is, this, is, this is binding, this is legal. So God's laws cannot be broken. You can ignore them, you can do what you want, but they're going to stick with you one way or the other to either, you know, to either um, um, bless you with rewards or to judge you, but they stick. Amen. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what the world, what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter what anybody is, is saying. God's word is law, amen, on the earth. In heaven, it will not change. So, so God is looking for something then. He's looking for people on the earth who will get an agreement with what has already been spoken in heaven. Now watch this then. I want you to get this picture. I'm just going to paint a picture. That when you speak, <clears throat> when you speak against what, what the law has says, let, let's say, for example, though, although no one does it here, maybe no one does it who's watching, but let's say you, you, you always use the, the words, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. Well, in heaven, that, those words are ignored. But they're not ignored on earth because the devil will pick up in those words and say, I'm going to use them against her or against him. Can you see that? It's just a law. So your words have such power. You open your mouth and you open up heaven in a sense. In fact, what's profound about this, I find this so profound, that the Father God himself takes heed, he takes ear to the words that you speak that's in line with his word. That is profound. I don't know how that all works, but that's that's how it works. So your word, guys, I need to stress this over and over. I probably preached a sermon like this a hundred times in different ways, but I need, I, you need to know that your words are very, very important. All your words have consequence. It doesn't matter how true. See, some people will trivialize words and say, oh, well, <clears throat> I'm sick, but I didn't really mean it. Yeah, you meant it. So you cannot even trivialize terminology, words, because they're picked up by, by God or by the enemy. Amen. God goes into action the very minute that you speak something that's in line with his word. But so does the enemy. So words cause action in the spirit realm. 
Someone should say amen. That was a great word there. <clears throat> amen. So what you say on earth reaches the ear of God in heaven, but not before you bind and loose on the earth. Because <clears throat> why would that be? Because God has given you the authority. You have the authority on the earth. So God's saying, Tom, because I've given you authority, I'm expecting you to bind stuff that is not in my word regarding your life. See, religion will say, oh, well, God's just going to do it in any way. God doesn't do it in a, in just, just because he's God and just because you're a Christian. God does it because you do something. It's always worked that way. I've often said that nothing happens except something happens. Amen. Nothing happens except something happens. Remember when Jonah was in the belly of the fish? Something had to happen to Jonah to get out of the fish. He could have just said, oh, well, God, you know, I've been your prophet, you know, think about me or what. But he actually had to do something that was difficult to do. He had to open his mouth and start to praise the most high God. Yeah. Nothing happens until you do something. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> How important is this? It is so important. So casual words have incredible consequences. And I hear them from Christians, not you know, when I travel to churches, you speak to people, you know, you can locate immediately a person's spiritual parameters or whatever you want to call it by their words, immediately. I don't know how many homes over the years, you know, I've been, in, I've been you know, I've stayed in, they've hosted me when I've spoken at churches or whatever it may be. And, and, you know, I'm always listening. I've always been so careful to listen to the opening lines of people because then I know what I need to do if I'm staying in that house a couple of nights. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm always really, I'm trying to gauge, and it can be the pastors. A lot of the times it is. But thank God I don't go to churches like that as much anymore. But you know what I'm saying? Words are important. So you can gauge the whole, you can gauge the spiritual tenor in a church by the words that are communicated within that church. Far less actions, but, you know, actions will tell you what words are going on. So <clears throat> Proverbs 18.21 says this. The message translation says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. How many believe that? Amen. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He just doesn't say the tongue, but are in the power of the tongue. So the tongue has power. And those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of the words. Sometimes there's things in the Bible we think, I wish they weren't in there, but they're, they're actually there. In other words, God's saying, Tom, you will bear the consequences of what you say. That's just the way, as I love you, you'll, you'll go to heaven, but you're going to bear the consequences of what you speak. That's just the law that he's put into the earth. It's a law that's in heaven and on earth. It says, um, this is what I want to get to regarding the healing. I'm just laying a foundation. It says, in Psalm 147, verse 15, he sends his commandments to the earth. His word runs very quickly. Now, I want to just try and elaborate on this. He sends, we're talking about words. He sends his commandments to the earth. His word runs very quickly. One translation says this, that his word travels at great speed. You wonder why God would put that in there. Why do we have to know that? There's a reason for that, I believe. In other words, with that speed is attached penetration. Hallelujah. Penetration with that, and I'll prove that to you just now. Your body, and I've, I've, I've put some of this in the book. I don't know if my book's here this morning on the book on healing, but there's... there's they don't even know. I mean, I've, I've researched this so many ways and they can't even find a number. But they reckon there's 100 trillion cells in your body or even more than that. 100 trillion. We don't even know what a trillion is. My son David tried to explain to me what a trillion was in terms of numbers. You know, with the, the data in America and it was just mind-blown. It's, it's mind-blown. But there's 100 trillion at least cells in your body. And they respond, science has told us, they respond, watch this now, to the way you think and what you speak. This is how integrated the spirit, soul, and body is. Can you see that? 
So, so, so your, your, your words are not devoid, they're not separate in any way to your body. God has created you as a triune being, like he's a triune God. And so <clears throat> they will respond, your cells will respond to what you, you think and what you say. They've even, uh, the researchers, more and more researchers are saying that, you know, we've often thought that your genes are what you're given with. But that wouldn't make sense if you're, if you're a, a believer in Christ. But your genes can actually be regulated by your speech. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm just giving you some, some ideas of the power of God's word, and then we'll bring it into a scripture, which is important for us in these times in which we live with the whole immunity thing that's going on. But, but they've also proved in science that our cells emit light, bio, biophotons they call it. So your cells emit light. And this light, watch now, this light, watch, watch, this is so powerful. This light is constantly sending and receiving information between cells. Amen. So the whole, the whole universe is an information center. If you think about that, God is trying to get information from us from heaven to earth. Our bodies trying to send information from cell to cell. And they reckon that that information is moving faster than the speed of light, which is a quantum phenomena. Faster than the speed of light. Hallelujah. You are a miracle, man. You are a miracle. Amen. And you know, all this is happening without you even knowing about it. It's all going on. With it, you know, and you know, <clears throat> the reason it's going on is one reason. Why would all this stuff be happening? Why would all this communication be, be going on, even at a cellular level, or it even could be at an atomic level? Who knows? We still don't know a whole lot of stuff. But why is all this stuff going on? Why has God designed me that there's communication at a cellular level? I'll tell you why. To keep you healthy. I'm sure there's more enthusiasm out there than there is here this morning. <laughs> to keep you healthy, God wants you. That's why it's happening. And you, don't, you have no control over that, except by your words. And this is the X factor. It's all happening unconsciously, except when you speak. So when you start to speak, you're going to be affecting those cells. Science tells us we have the ability to affect light in our cells or to enhance the light by the way we think and speak. And you know, when I saw that, you know, um, I do a seminar on, on, the, on, on the book that I've written, but um, I, I remember up in Singapore, I was preparing for this seminar um, last year. And um, I've been researching a lot on this stuff. And then I came across this scripture that blew me away because there's always scripture to back up stuff. Listen to what the scripture says in Psalm 119, verse 130. It says, the entrance or the unfolding of your word gives light. The unfolding of your word gives light. Or the entrance of your word gives light. So what happens when you and I open up the word of God? There is light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that is penetrating into your very being. I hope this is not too technical. Is this okay? I'm trying to keep it simple. Amen. It is penetrating into your being. It is not just, oh, well, I'll read the word this morning and, you know, I know I'm supposed to read the word. No, no, no. Think about this from, from this day. Think about this. That every time you open up the word, there is light that is penetrating into your being. Amen. So your words are doorways, doorways giving light where there is darkness. Hallelujah. It says in the Amplified Bible regarding that scripture, the unfolding of your glorious word gives light. So, so wherever there's, this is why, you know, when you often find times you, you open up the Bible and you think, I wonder, I didn't really mean, mean to come to that verse, but I came to that verse. And um, why am I reading this kind of thing? That's what you need. That's probably... It's probably there's darkness that may be associated with something that you need regarding the light that God has given you at that moment in time. 
Amen. You don't even know it, kind of. It's like, oh, wow. But there's light. So we could put it this way, that God, God's word enhances the communication of your cells. God's word, when you speak God's word over your life, I believe this, that you're enhancing the communication of your cells to restore and to maintain health. Two things always, to restore and to maintain health. Every cell in your body is under God's control. So speak to your cells, man. Speak to your cells. Speak to your body. Amen. You have to speak to your body. It says in Hebrews 1.3 message, he holds everything together by what he says, powerful words. Hallelujah. So every atom is held together in your body by powerful words. <laughs> if God changed his mind about the love that he has for you, you would disintegrate in a second. Amen. So, so, so we, 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 know, we know the scripture very, very well. It says he sent his word. Now remember, his word moves very fast. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Now what? There's two things happening here. He sent his word and healed them. So there's healing. And he delivered them which means that the thing that he healed you from, you're delivered from, which means it's not supposed to come in you again. Amen? He just didn't heal you. He delivered you. That's powerful. The detail that God goes into is incredible. So, so God's word, it doesn't matter what they are. I mean, if God's word is salvation, they will penetrate into that unsafe person to bring salvation. They will, they will move the darkness. The eyes of their understanding will be enlightened. So obviously we should pray those scriptures over people who don't know Jesus. Amen. That the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. That that word will penetrate. And all it takes is someone else. It might not even be you, although you, although you may be the closest person to that person. But it may take someone else. If you've, if you've taken authority over that darkness, it may just be someone that comes along their path that speaks the word to them and, and they, they accept Jesus. You don't know how God does all of that, but he does it. If it's healing, his words have the power to heal. If it's deliverance, they have the power to deliver. So God expects you and me to send, obviously, his word into whatever area of need there is in your life. Amen. Come on now. He expects you to send it. Because, you know, we say he sent his word and healed, healed them. And did. So who did he send it to? He sent it to you. Amen. God is, God is not, you know, a genius. He hasn't got a magical wand up in heaven saying, oh, well, you know, I think I'll just touch Kay today because I really like Kay. She's been at church regular for the last 10 years. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't matter how long you've been at church. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor or whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is the word of God. Amen. Amen. God, used, God has used some of the most feeble, in a sense, people or weak people. Maybe they don't speak the best. Maybe they're, they're not the most articulate. But God will use them because it gets down to this word. It's like the belief in the word of God, the communication of the word of God. It all comes back to this here. So God will use anybody, anybody, anybody to heal the sick that believe in this here. That believe in the authority that God has given them. Does that make sense? It all comes down to this. It's nothing else. Yeah, we can get polished speakers and we can do all this, that, and the next thing. But I'm telling you, man, it comes down to the word of God. It comes down to the individual who believes in the word of God. So they have, a, they have a bearing directly on our health. I'll read you a couple of scriptures. Then I'm coming to one scripture that I really want you to get and I want you to meditate on it the whole week. We'll come to that in a minute because it's regarding everything that's going on with the, with the COVID and everything else that's going on. as a scripture that directly covers it. It covers it specifically. But look at these scriptures. It says in Proverbs 12, 18, um, 
But the tongue of the wise promotes health. The tongue of the wise promotes health. In the message translation, it says there is healing in the words of the wise. There is healing in the words. We watch now. There is healing in the words of the wise. So where does healing begin? Healing begins with your words. Hallelujah. In the King James Version, it says, the tongue of the wise is health. Whoa. The tongue of the wise, the person who speaks health from his mouth is health. Hallelujah. It's very profound, isn't it? God's word. <clears throat> so the scripture I really want to get to, and I want you all to turn there if you would, please. Would you go to Hebrews chapter 4? <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4. Because there's so much stuff going on, you know. There's so much stuff going on, man. It just blows the mind. People. You know what, guys? I'm telling you, if we, if we did not know Jesus, you'd go crazy. You would go absolutely crazy because there's so much noise. There is so much talk. Isn't there so much talk going on? It's incredible. Guys are just talking. And then we're listening, right? So, but what is God saying? What is actually God saying through this whole stuff? We have to be tuned into what God is saying. Or you will go dilly. Because there's so much confusion out there. And this expert says that, and then this, this expert says, well, this is what I think. And then that expert says, well, I don't know about that. And you hear all this, all these voices, all this noise, and it's just noise. Yeah. It is noise. So above the noise, there is a voice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Watch this now. In Hebrews 4, in verse 12, it says, <clears throat> what does it say? I'll read it. I got it. For the, word, for the word of God is living and powerful. For the word of God is living and powerful. It's alive and active, one of the translations says. It's alive. God's word is alive and it's active. Meaning it, it, it needs to, it's objective. God's word is an objective to do whatever it describes. That's its objective. It's always its objective. And the Holy Spirit will back up that. Whatever it says, its objective is to fulfill what is spoken, what is said. But then it's looking for someone to speak it, right? So it says there, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That would have been the sharpest thing in those days, I guess, as a sword, two-edged sword. Pearson piercing even to the dividing or the division of the soul and spirit, the joints and marrow. You see that word marrow there? And as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So, so what God's word does is God's word looks at basically how you and I are processing his word. Amen. Amen. If you, you, can read, you can read the word of God in healing and it's a kind of casual, kind of casual word, you know. It's kind of, well, do you know that, that God will actually discern that? If you take the word casually, God knows you've taken it casually. If you take the word seriously, he knows you've taken it seriously. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So he says here, Piercing, because it moves fast. Piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit, the joints, the joints and marrow. And as a descent of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the, the, the marrow, uh, with, with regard um, the marrow, the marrow is a production factory for, health, for a healthy immune system. Amen. 
This one scripture could help so many Christians. Obviously, you should take, you know, whatever you feel you need to take. But the marrow, he's getting to the very marrow. The word is penetrating into the marrow. And I'll read this to you. It's, it says, it's where the stem cells, the white and the red blood cells, and the blood platelets are produced that are necessary for your immune system to act as a barrier against disease. Amen. Healthy bone marrow is necessary to the health and defense of the entire body. And for this reason, it has been highlighted as a, as a primary target of God's word. I think I actually wrote that in my book. It's a primary, it's a, watch now, the immune system is a primary target, according to Hebrews 4.12, of God's word. It's a primary target. Hallelujah. He wants to get to the marrow. Because if he gets to the marrow, if the word will get to the marrow, how does he get to the marrow? You believe it, you speak it. You can say, Father, I thank you that your word is penetrating into my very marrow, that my immune system is strong. I am not subject to COVID or any other thing. I don't care if it's all around me, according to Psalm 91. I am not subject to it in Jesus' mighty name. I am not subject to it. Leviticus, we're nearly finished. Leviticus 17, 11 says this. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. So the life of the flesh is in the blood. Just imagine the word of God penetrating into your immune system. Just imagine the word of God penetrating into your blood. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience. This is the key. It's the worship key again. This is Proverbs 3 and verse 78. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience. Fear the Lord. That's worship. And turn entirely, entirely away from evil. Amen. It will be health to your body. And then it says, to your marrow, your nerves, your sinews, and your muscles. All your inner parts. And a refreshment, in brackets, physical well-being to your bones. I think that must be the amplifier I took that from. Proverbs 3. Now watch what it mentions here. Watch what it mentions. It talks there. <clears throat> it will be health to your body, in brackets, to your marrow, to your nerves, to your sinews, and to your muscles. Amen. So what is he talking about here? He's talking about reverently worship God with awe and reverence. That's where your health actually begins. You know, because if you've got that, you'll start to speak right. Amen. So you, you worship God with reverence and awe. And then he says, if you do that to me and you turn away from evil, Amen. So we turn away from evil. We take captive to Christ every thought that is not of God. That's turning away from evil. Then he says, it'll be health to your body. Which part of my body? Well, God says, I've got the whole lot covered. Watch what he's talking about. He says, the marrow, Tom, is your immune system. It's in the scripture. He says, your nerves is your communication system. Your sinews is your connection system. And your muscles is your structural system. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to, I want you to meditate on this. I want you to get this. Because this could make the difference between what is coming in the world and we don't know what's coming. We've not, but, you know, stuff is coming. It's not all good stuff, right? But you don't have to fear that. And you don't have to be subject to it according to God. Because he says this is law. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. If two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask of my Father, it will be done of my Father who is in heaven. It'll be done. 
Proverbs 4, 20 to 22, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them. And then it's, he covers the whole thing here. And life to all their flesh, not some of their flesh. Life to all their flesh. The message puts it like this as we stop. Last verse. He says, Dear friends, listen well to my words. Listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. Concentrate. Learn by it or learn it by heart. In other words, you meditate on it. It becomes your default, right? I've, I've spoken about that so many times. Those who discover these words live it says. Those who discover these words live, really live. He emphasizes it again. They live? No, no, no. They really live. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you ask a guy, you're rich? He says, no, I'm really rich. There's a difference, right? <clears throat> so he's saying here, those who discover these words really live. Body and soul, they are bursting with health. Hallelujah. So it's either true or it's false, right? But it's true. Amen. Let's stand because there's a couple of things I want to do this morning. Hallelujah. I'm just going to bless you with the word. And it says in Psalm 34, verse 8 to 10, in the Amplified Oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. Hallelujah. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who trusts and takes refuge in Him. Oh, fear the Lord, you His saints. Revere and worship Him. For there is no want for those who truly revere and worship Him with godly fear. And verse 10 says, The young lions lack food and suffer hunger. But they who seek and inquire of the Lord by the right of their need and on the authority of his word, none of them shall lack any beneficial thing. Hallelujah. So we, on the authority of his word, can believe, according to Philippians 4, that God supplies our needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. So this morning as we give our tithes and our offering, we give because we know God is good, He's faithful, and He said He will supply all our needs and that we will not lack any beneficial thing. Thank you, Lord. Can I pray over the offering now? Father, we just come into Your throne room and we are so grateful, Father God, for Your Word, for Your promises. Father God, and we thank You that as we have given into Sydney Life Church, part of the kingdom of God. We thank you now, Lord God, that your word will work mightily in our lives. We ask a blessing on those who have given, Lord God, according to your word, and those who give online, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for it now, for a blessing and for a supply for them. Thank you, Father. You supply the seed. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we hope that you enjoyed that sermon. Thanks once again for joining us. If you'd like to find out more about us, please visit our website at sydneylifechurch.com and um, check us out on our social media platforms. Also, if you would like to submit a prayer request, please visit our website and we will be happy to pray for you. We pray you have a blessed week ahead and we'll see you next time. Thank you.